Hello, you're watching News from Kazakhstan. It is Saturday, January 12th. These are the headlines. The opposition requests President Nazarbayev to suspend oil projects with China until they are fully acquainted with the public. Lasovoya village school children in Pavlodar region will not await completion of their school building's construction. A digitalized classic, enthusiasts create an iPhone app with Abai Kulambayev's words of wisdom. The widely discussed topic in Kazakhstan regarding a transfer of 40% of oil and gas into Chinese control prompted the public to turn to President Nusultan Nazarbayev. In a letter addressed to the head of state, citizens demand the country's upper echelon to publish data about the real state of the oil and gas sector. The opposition also asked for a suspension of some oil and gas projects with the eastern neighbor. We hear the arguments in this first story. The info on a possible Chinese expansion in the oil sector of Kazakhstan's economy that has recently hit internet headlines still remains the focus of public attention since the revealed statistics triggered a wave of mass discontent. According to independent sources, in October region alone, Chinese investors extract almost 100% of oil and gas, more than 60% in Kazolorda region, over 30% in Mangistau region, and over 10% in Atarao region. Chinese investors already own more than 10% in Kazmunai gas exploration production. Social activists and opposition members have sent an open letter to the President and Prime Minister demanding transparency and renegotiation of the current oil contracts, as well as full information about the owners of the country's oil deposits. Despite having signed the appeal, politician Amirjan Kasanov doesn't expect any return moves from the government, as none of the previously submitted letters ever evoked a response. I don't expect the authorities to provide a detailed answer this time either simply because they never do. Besides, even if some of the officials did want to respond to the public inquiry, they wouldn't be able to do that due to possessing little to no information about these questionable contracts. At the same time, the People's Communist Party is in no hurry to make public statements until the official data is revealed. In case the figures confirm China's advantage, party activists express their commitment to defend the national wealth by all possible means. First, we want to see the official report on the actual participation interests and involvement share of the Chinese party. After all, there are laws to follow and the national wealth of Kazakhstan must belong to our people in the first place. As soon as the information on the likely takeover of Kazakhstan oil industry by Chinese companies went public, Kazmunai Gas issued a press release assuring that the Chinese participation is clearly exaggerated. However, concerned citizens still insist on the official response from Astana. Meanwhile, the state authorities choose to hold off making statements on the widely discussed national security issues. A public discussion on the construction of the Kogzhailao ski resort began with the public's unsanctioned entering inside the Kazakh weather station. Officials invited a limited number of participants, something that conflicted with the public's plans. Here's how the story developed. The first public hearing on the construction of Kogzhailao ski resort started with a scandal. Kazgidromet attempted to ban volunteers of the environmental society Zelona Espasenia Green Salvation to attend the meeting. However, bent under a great deal of pressure, the organizers had to allow everyone in. The hearing kicked off with official reports revealing that construction will be initiated in 2014 and require one and a half billion dollars. Apparently, the authorities have already estimated the future revenue from the projects, the number of job openings, and even the way they are going to apply new technologies. The volunteers and presents reacted by organizing a silent protest, lining up around the table with posters in their hands. I believe for Almaty region and Kazakhstan in general, it is simply a crime not to utilize all the available resources. The territory has been appraised as a recreation area for people. This project is going to be beneficial both for the state and the city. MP Aitkul Samakava, who was invited to the hearing, supported the local administration initiative at first. However, following the disruptive reaction of the construction opponents, she expressed concerns regarding the environmental safety of the project. Okay, that's enough. I may have to ask you for two more minutes to let everyone take their seats. I'm certainly concerned now about some of the issues like this place losing its natural purity. 
The environmentalists presented part of their claims in a poster's reading you're violating our rights and improve the already existing resorts instead. They say the natural boundary of Kogjailao is located in the Ilalatau National Park, and a couple of years ago Kazakhstan nominated it for the World Heritage List. This valuable site is now protected by the Aarhus Convention. The activity should not lead to a decrease in biodiversity, that's one of the convention principles. Yet you admit that 27 hectares of woodlands will be destroyed, as if they were going to restore the lost tenfold. The Friday hearings failed to determine whether the unique piece of land should be developed for the construction of Kazakh version of French Alps resorts. The project's opponents insists on setting up another meeting as they need time to prepare more counter-arguments. The Karaganda Region Health Department was sued by a contractor demanding compensation for a major rehabilitation of the Temirtao Children's Hospital. Doctors in turn blamed construction workers, saying they did not meet the contract standards. Once again, both arguments in this report. The only children's hospital in Timirta was built back in 1969. No serious maintenance works have been done in the building for 40 years. It wasn't until last spring that the Regional Public Health Administration found a contractor, LLP Manada, that finally got down to business. The foreman says that 80% of the work has been completed in five months and the site was supposed to be commissioned by November 1st. Alice financing was cut unexpectedly. I can't get a hold of them, so no one can explain to us what is going on. They have no money and it seems they are not interested in completing the repairs. Construction worker Azim Khan Akimbayev comes to the hospital building with his wife every day hoping to be finally paid. The head of the large family says they haven't seen the money for months. The family's New Year's dinner consisted of potato and water. I bought gifts to my kids every year, but I couldn't afford anything this year. I have seven children and everyone needs to eat. This year we had only potatoes. Foreman Rustam Junusov says that experts in building control service came to inspect the site, confirming that 80% of the building had been repaired. But since the hospital never paid up, the workers took the issue to court. In response, the Regional Public Health Administration says that they are the victims due to contract breaches and failed schedule. According to the contract, LLP Manada was to complete the repair works by November 1st. We made a 30% advance payment in the amount of $457,000 and then we provided financing on a monthly basis according to the workload. By October, the financing added up by $748,000. Then, in October, the work speed was dropped for unknown reasons, followed by the decreased number of workers on site. While construction workers and doctors are debating over whose fault it is, the children are still undergoing treatments in a half-repaired building. Some of them have been accommodated in one of the hospital wings, others sent to the maternity home department. The repairs have stopped for now and the contractor left the site expecting to get expert opinion for the use in a court of law. Lazovaya village school children in Balvadar region are forced to study under extraordinary conditions. Instead of a school, classes are conducted inside the village club and the local administration. That because the school building was declared to be in a state of emergency. Local officials remain calm, saying the children will soon return to their own building. On the hardships of schooling in this report. Before the commencement of this school year, the officials from Pavlodar Education Department said that all schools in the region are ready for pupils. Recently, however, it became clear that it's not entirely true. On September 1st, some of the kids in the village of Lazavoya went to see the district administration instead of their teachers. We're tired of going to the village hall or district administration, and all we want is an actual school soon. The reason why over 100 pupils are forced to study in the district administration building is the emergency condition of their 30-year-old school building. Last year, local authorities suddenly realized that the building is literally falling apart and didn't risk letting the children. The school was temporarily relocated to the area administration headquarters, although parents didn't really welcome such an arrangement. The senior officials are to blame. Why they are not working? Where did the money allocated for the construction and repairs go? My own kids have long graduated from school, but I take my granddaughter there and she's clearly suffering because of it. At the moment, the school is being repaired by teachers themselves who fix it up after contractors who've done a cool job, at least according to senior village residents. Locals actually fear that the building might indeed collapse after such lazy repairs. Could you imagine building a foundation in such freezing weather? We're not that stupid after all. The foundation wasn't properly laid and when the spring comes it will just fall apart, collapsing the school. 
Officials, though, don't share the same sentiment, saying the contractors have done everything well. The village administration head believes that pupils will like the new look of the school. The floor has been replaced everywhere, plastic windows were installed and, as you can see, they are of good quality. We also have the best gym in the entire region. You just had to see its poor shape before, but now it is rebuilt and has a level surface. The head of the village administration also added that children will return to the school in the coming days and everyone will finally forget about classes in the officials' offices or in the middle of the dance floor. Meanwhile, schools in Astana began offering self-defense lessons. Special Forces fighters demonstrated on Friday how to disarm an attacker. Such training exercises to prevent teenage crime are planned to be conducted in all of Astana's schools until the end of the school year. High school students were taught self-defense skills and the best way to act in extreme situations. The special ops showed the kids how to avoid fights without violence, explaining that any dangerous situation can be resolved with minimal damage. At the same time, the city police department reports that 119 minors were prosecuted for various crimes last year alone. Pupils themselves were said to be victims of over 400 crimes, which were mostly assaults and robberies. The purpose of this training is not aimed at teaching kids how to use these self-defense techniques against their classmates, but to prepare children for the best course of action in extreme situations, like going back home alone in the evening. This is the primary goal, but we also want to prevent crimes, and kids should be aware that any use of force may result in administrative or criminal liability. Also in the capital, firefighters named the cause of last year's Khazret Sultan Mosque fire on Friday. The Department of Emergency Situations says it was the use of polyutherine instead of gypsum in the construction project. The largest mosque in Kazakhstan caught fire on the day of parliamentary elections January 15th, with the emergency call received at approximately 4 p.m. The total area of 800 square meters was affected and one of the employees was reported dead. The case, however, has been dropped after a settlement. 922 fires in total were registered in the capital last year. Firefighters say the overall rate of emergencies rose by 21 percent, while the death toll remains almost the same, 74 in 2011 and 75 last year. The damages to the city in the same time frame have been estimated at over one and a half million dollars. The administration is now procuring equipment necessary for combating fires and high rises and employing helicopters of Kaz Aviaspas if necessary. Still rapid response vehicles known for their maneuverability are and the biggest demand of the fire department, which needs 15 such units at least. Access roads in residential areas are always blocked with parked cars that impede rescue works, and that's why these rapid response vehicles are used to maneuver through the neighborhood and reach the emergency site on time. Apple owners in Almaty were demonstrated how to use the digitized app by. A group of young enthusiasts created a special app aimed at ingraining inside the minds of iPhone users the age-old sayings which hold true to this day. The legendary epic The Words of Edification by the famous Kazakh poet Abai is now available as an iPhone audiobook recorded by Kazakhstan artists. The application released successfully thanks to sheer enthusiasm of 50 people who developed the Abai 45 mobile program with no financial support. The number in the application's name stands for 45 actors whose voices were used for recording the book. The iPhone application also features photos of the narrators made up to look like famed national heroes such as Chukhan Valikhanov, Alash Ordinsi and others. According to the project's ideological leader Aisulu Azimbayeva, the history abounds with prominent figures. However, it was the team's unanimous decision to start with a great Abai. I believe that only the words and deeds standing the test of time prove to be the ageless truth. The words of edification is deservedly one of the major iconic writings in Kazakh literature. TV presenter Dina Tazbulatova is convinced that a great idea, along with passion to implement it, can make any project succeed despite the lack of financial support. The app creators transformed the usual apartment into a recording studio. When the costume of Chokan Valikhanov required special shoulder straps, one of the team members folded a few pieces of paper in a particular way and attached them to the costume. They ended up looking like real agelettes. We truly enjoyed what we were doing. 
According to another project participant, Chinggis Kapin, the team is now planning to release another application for the Kazakh language version of the words of edification and the literary works of other writers. Curiously, however, the most renowned contemporary author, Nursultan Nazarbayev, is unlikely to be singled out for an app. We might consider starting a project devoted to the president of Kazakhstan, but only in case we feel the spark and true urge to do that. The project up i45 is available for the free download in the Apple Store. Unfortunately, not many of the great classic authors' compatriots can afford a mobile device priced at 600 US dollars. That is all we have time for today. Tune in to Vlast KZ on Monday. Have a great weekend.